how much money a dietitian makes. In this video, I'll provide a detailed breakdown of the exact earnings that a dietitian can expect at different stages of their career and in different parts of the world. And if you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. So as a dietitian, you can work a traditional job and earn an average salary, but there is also the possibility to earn a lot of money. If you have a business mindset, take risks and seek opportunity. However, what a good or average salary is, is subjective. So in this video, I'm going to be as objective as possible and stick to the facts and figures. Now, firstly, to put a dietitian salary into perspective, I'm going to look at the average salary figures per country. So in 2022, the average salary in the UK was around 51,000 US dollars, Ireland 58,000, in the United States 77,000, Canada 59, and Australia 62. The traditional route for many dietitians is working in clinical practice. And this is typically within the public sector, like in the HSE in Ireland or in the NHS in the UK. Now the benefits to these types of jobs are financial and job security. So you should have steady, reliable monthly income. There's usually set salaries nationally, so you can't be underpaid in comparison to a colleague. And usually there's nice structured working hours, good annual leave, public pensions, and low stress in terms of income security and financial risk. But you may be pretty stressed on the hospital board. The drawbacks is Actually, again, the set salary. So your work excellence can't be acknowledged with financial reward. There's usually no bonus. Promotions based on hard work or achievements are often not possible. There's limited scope for increased earnings. And again, your manager can't really reward you because they have to abide by that public health system. So as you can see, the set salary I have as both a positive and a negative because it really depends on the kind of person that you are. For some people, a role and salary structure like this is satisfactory. However, it can be frustrating, particularly if you are a hard worker with high financial ambitions. You you could be working much harder than another colleague to be the best dietitian that you can be, but you'll be getting the same paycheck. I'm going to pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel so I can continue making more videos. Now, if you plan to work as a dietitian in Ireland, you'll most likely be employed by the National Health Service, which is the HSE. And the HSE follows publicly available pay scales. So I'm not outing any hidden information. You can find these on the internet and I'll have everything linked below too. So according to these pay scales, an entry level dietitian starting their career will have a salary of 40,000 euro or 44,000 USD. And the salary will increase gradually by approximately 2000 each year. So if you remain on the entry level dietitian scale, after five years, you will earn a salary of approximately 48,000 euros, 52,000 USD. However, ideally what you want to be doing is jumping onto a higher pay scale. So usually you have to spend three years on the first entry level pay scale, but after those three years, you should be then eligible to move onto a higher pay scale. So instead of an entry level dietitian, you would become a senior dietitian. So the pay scale structure is entry level dietitian, then senior dietitian clinical specialist, dietitian manager, and dietitian manager in charge. But I want to be clear that you do not automatically just jump up this ladder of pay scales. If only it was that easy. You need to wait for a new job at that pay scale with that title to become available. Then apply, interview against maybe other dietitians trying to move up to. So ideally, after completing three years as an entry level dietitian, you want to become a senior dietitian and the senior dietitian pay scales starts at around 58,000 euros per year. And it increases by approximately 1.5 thousand each year after that. And then if you want, you can try and move on to become a clinical specialist and a manager and a manager in charge. But again, you need the appropriate years of experience to apply for these positions and you need to wait for one of these positions to become available. The highest level is the dietitian manager in charge. And this starts at 81,000 euro or 88,000 USD. The reality is there isn't as many of these higher level positions and they can be competitive. For example, I know dietitians who have waited 10 years on the entry level scale, just waiting for a senior job in the particular location or area that they wanted to come up. Now, if you're in the UK, you will likely be employed by the NHS. And as per the NHS pay scales, the starting salary for a band five dietitian is 28,000 sterling. And after two years, you can move up to the next level, which is band six. And there you start at a salary of around 35,000 sterling, 45,000 USD. And this can go up to around 81,000 at a consultant level. And this is a general overview as the exact numbers might vary a little bit between different trusts. So in the United States, the Academy of Dietetics carry out regular surveys on the compensation of dietitians. And according to the most recent 2021 survey, median hourly wage among practicing accredited dietitians is $33 per hour. 
and if annualized, this equates to a full-time salary of around 70,000 US dollars per year. And as with any profession, salaries and fees will vary by region of the country, employment settings, scope of responsibility, and the supply of dietitians. So moving on to Canada. In Canada, they have a new grad survey for dietitians. And according to the 2020 survey, 75% of newly graduated dietitians secured a job within the first 12 months and had earnings ranging from 55,000, 85,000 Canadian dollars. Now moving on to private hospitals. I haven't worked in a private hospital, but from my knowledge, the pay is usually quite similar to the public pay scales. However, there may be a slight other job perks, like the ability to join health insurance schemes, more flexible hours or different working conditions. This will of course, however, vary between hospitals. Now, dietitians in industry, this can be a little more interesting and there can be more scope for salary negotiations here. But firstly, what do I mean by industry? So the British Dietetic Association defines an industry specialist dietitian as dietitians that work in an area of dietetics, the research, development and production of nutritional products services, resources, and communications are the main outputs. But to break this down into an easier to digest format, think about companies like Abbott who own Ensure, or Danone that owns Actimel, or even Apple and MyFitnessPal. But all of these companies provide nutrition products or services, and they need the dietitian to help make the product, research nutrition trends, or provide consultancy expertise. Your role could be anything from research, to development, to marketing, to sales, and even to making social media content. And you could be working at these companies at any level all the way up to a medical director. Who knows, you could even build your own company and become the CEO. So the earning potential in one of these roles can potentially be much higher. But I am saying potentially, because I'm going to refer back to the public pay scales again. It's very hard, but not impossible, to request a higher salary than a dietitian with a similar skill set or level of experience. For example, if you were a newly qualified dietitian with one to two years of experience, it's unlikely the company is going to be interested in paying you way above the normal salary range they will often use these pay scales as a benchmark. However, they can pay you what they want. They are not confined to these public pay scales. So you can be in a position to negotiate. If you can argue that you will provide immense value with a high return on investment, maybe you possess unique qualifications and specialized expertise, then it may be appropriate to engage in negotiations. And in these situations, it's important to be assertive and stand up for yourself. And additional benefits of working in industry can include things like private health insurance. If you're field-based, it could be things like a company car or lunch allowance. There could be bonus schemes and you might also be allowed to invest into the company itself. The disadvantage with industry is that it can be less secure. For example, if the company performs poorly, there could be an increased risk of layoffs. Now the next option may not be for everyone, but you do pay a lot of taxes in most countries. However, there are parts of the world where you can earn a very high salary and most of it ends up being take home pay. You just need to be willing and have the flexibility to move to these parts of the world. I promise it's not as bad as it seems. Another option as a dietitian is to work for yourself. And the increased potential earnings here are huge. When you work for yourself, the sky's the limit for your income. And the harder you choose to work, generally the more money you will make. And as mentioned earlier, this is not the case. You work for a corporation or a hospital. In those settings, you make a set salary, no matter how many patients you see in a day. But in private practice, the reality is much different. And as you grow your business, and more and more people become aware of the services that you're providing, the busier you will get. And the more patients you see, the more money you will get. And therefore there becomes a somewhat linear relationship between your personal output in your practice and your income. It may even be an option for you to start this as a side hustle, but I do need to preface this and say that private practice is not for everyone. And it certainly isn't for the faint-hearted. I've seen some dietitians attempt to go private and they have crashed and burned. You do need to have a high work ethic and a business mindset. And if you don't currently have a business mindset, it's something that you can learn. Now, working for yourself requires a lot of commitment, particularly at the beginning, because you may be working really long hours with very little reward. If you've ever heard the saying, an entrepreneur entrepreneur escapes the 40 hour work week to work his own 60 hour work week. However, with the right approach, there is potential to earn a lot of money while scaling down your hours. And as a private practice dietitian, you can do many things. You can work with patients and clients one-to-one, -one, you can host webinars, you can do corporate wellness, you can do media work and health writing, and you can provide consultancy services too. But back to the facts and figures, because I wanna be very objective in this video, I'm going to share the example of Katie Dodd who is a private practice dietitian who openly shares her income reports. And her income report for 2021 was 150,000 US dollars. Now this is pre-tax and expenses, but I'll leave the information linked in the description so you can see the full breakdown. However, interestingly, she doesn't see any one-to-one -one clients. 
And this just shows that there are so many things that you can do as a dietitian beyond seeing clients. Now, a downside to working for yourself is that while your potential income can be much higher, so too is the financial risk. When you are an employee, there is very little financial risk. You show up for work, do your job and get paid. Often your employer contributes a portion of your health insurance, assume responsibility for your liability insurance, and they even pay you for taking time off. In private practice, it's different. If your patients don't show up for their visits, you don't get paid. Working for yourself often means no paid maternity leave, no sick leave. But to make money in private practice, you might need to have that steady flow of patients. And if you have a slow month, you still need to pay your rent and cover the cost of your utilities. You will also have startup costs like you would in any business with purchasing things like software and equipment. Next, I want to touch on income as a media dietitian. Whilst this is an area that can be hard to break into initially, again, I take another objective example of Amy Gorin, a media dietitian that also openly shares her income reports. And she has earned over 260,000 US dollars in media and brand partnerships in a year. But again, this is a different skill set for many dietitians. A lot of media work at the beginning might actually not be paid at all. Now I'm gonna look at blogging, social media, and YouTube. These are all platforms that, if approached correctly, can make great income streams for dietitians. The internet is flooded with nutrition advice, but very little of it is actually coming from reputable sources. For example, having your own self-hosted website has the ability to earn you ad revenue. And some social media platforms like YouTube directly pay their creators. And many businesses are willing to pay a lot of money for sponsored posts and ads. And with an engaged following, you can make money with affiliate programs. A great example is Abby Sharp, whose net worth is estimated to be between one and five million. Finally, as a dietitian, you possess great expertise and opportunities to start your own business, whether it's related to nutrition or not. Of course, it's not something that you might be jumping right into after getting your dietetic degree. However, as you progress in your career, you will discover numerous opportunities in the nutrition industry. All it takes is one brilliant idea followed by action and the possibilities are endless. Take the example of the founder of dietitian boss, Libby Rothschild. This is now a $1 million business. So my closing thoughts, when we look at the average salary of a dietitian across the world, a regular dietitian job will make you an average salary in comparison to country norms. But there are many opportunities for dietitians to expand their earnings. However, many healthcare professionals are not well educated in business or personal finance. We are taught about patient care and clinical work, not taxes. Many of us will join employment pension schemes and never ask any questions. In recent years, I have spent a lot of time improving my financial literacy. And my advice to any dietitian or aspiring dietitian would be to do the same. It's not something that you should push off until a few years down the line. Because if you understand anything about compounding and the S&P 500, the sooner you start, the better. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, comment below and let me know what area of dietetics appeals the most to you. And if there's any area that I touched on today that you'd like me to expand more on in a future video, let me know in the comments below. As a thank you, I have a free recipe ebook, which I've linked in the description box below. And I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.